Welcome to Last Match Standing, the podcast where we review, relive, and rank the 100 greatest wrestling matches of all time. As always, I'm Spencer. I'm Paul. I'm Landon. And I'm Izzy. And we are here with a special guest, um, Izzy Mania, as a matter of (laughs) fact. That's right. There she is. Uh, Izzy, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. Uh, We met you, uh, Landon and I, when we went to the Royal Rumble in Houston, and uh, we were all there for Edge's return, right, which was incredible. Yes, it was. Uh, And I just wanted to tell you that it was so much fun meeting you and your parents, who are phenomenal people. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, So, I, you know, again, I appreciate making that connection with you. And um, today, we are going to relive from October 7th, 2015, technically from Winter Park, Florida, but we'll call it Orlando. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Full Sail University, of course, NXT TakeOver Respect for the 30-minute Iron Man match between Bayley and Sasha Banks for the NXT Women's Championship. And you know what? Rumor has it, you know a thing or two about this one. Oh, I know. I know very little about it. (laughs) I'm joking. joking. (laughs) Uh, this, you know, what's so interesting to me is, uh, this match, you know, obviously we're going on four and a half years ago. Uh, and I remember it fondly, but what I remember the most about it was Sasha Banks and her interactions with you, Izzy. It's like, yes. that, that's what I remember from it. And, and watching it back now, um, uh, because I mean, you're, cause you're obviously four and a half years older now. How, how old are you now? I am 12 years old. Okay, yeah, you're 12 years old, right? So then you were seven, eight-ish. And um, it's just the images from that match are so memorable. Uh, yes. It's fascinating to me. Uh, Izzy, what are, you, what are you doing now? It's been four and a half years. What, what's your story? What is Izzy? What's Izzy Mania? So pretty much um, the whole Bailey thing happened that, like, I don't want to say phase, but it was kind of a phase, I guess. Um, Bailey went up and I could just, like, we didn't have, like, I don't want to say that connection, but I wasn't traveling with her, obviously. So I was kind of like, where do I go now? Like, how do I keep my name going? Because some people, they knew me just from being the Bailey girl and dressing up as Bailey and like the whole NXT takeover respect thing. Um, so then I started to train and I, um, started my Twitter. Um, I did like, like YouTube videos, um, like vlogging like me here looking back at them they were really bad just just comparing the ones i had today and then like back then it was so bad like, what a mature poster. thing to say i say that about no, like, anything actually, i do i remember um some of my first videos i was so scared of being super loud so i would pretty much whisper and my dad was like you gotta talk louder and i was like okay and we lived in a townhouse and we still do so i was just super scared but i finally got over that fear um but we posted more um working out videos that got a little bit um and then i started to train at a pro wrestling school i had my first match versus effie and that was so much fun i got choke slam um kind of broke the internet (laughs) yeah it it definitely did i because i was gonna bring it up but i'm glad you did because i'm pretty sure didn't that make you the punk pro wrestling internet champion it did, um, and then I threw that um, title in the trash. <laughs> oh! Yeah, yeah uh, kind of a little um, homage to uh, Alondra Blaze. Yes. Um, and then I left my pro wrestling school. I went to BJJ slash MMA. I did a small career in that, um, doing tournaments and stuff. And then I went to Monster Factory um, up in... New Jersey, um, did a summer camp just for one week, sadly. Oh, it was amazing. And then I started to do the Hot Tag, which is a weekly show all about NXT, and it is on Twitter. That's pretty much the only thing I post. And then in between with wrestling and what I thought about the show. So Wednesday, right before NXT, I will post a video of me just talking about the moments I'm really excited for. And then Friday, I'll post a video where I'm um, asking the fans at Full Sail, like, a fun little question. I know I did one uh, for Valentine's Day, and I asked them who would be your Valentine and had to be an NXT superstar 
And then Sunday, I will do um, like a superstar of the week, or I start a new segment heating up um, where I will highlight a up and coming NXT superstar. Um, and then I did amateur wrestling, which the season has ended and I'm waiting for it to start up again. And then I'm just working out at my little gym. So, yeah. I mean, wow. <laughs> That was a lot. I know. Yeah, I'm like, I was like, you've whew. done more than any of us have done. <laughs> right. I, I'm so excited to see where you go from here because it's already been a really incredible journey. The Hot Tag is an excellent, excellent uh, internet series. And so, Thank you. So what are your goals? Where, what, where, is, where are you maybe in five years? So definitely I want to become a pro wrestler. I think that's the big goal. I definitely want to get into the business when I'm 18 because I I don't want to sound too like bratty and like spoiled, but I definitely want to have a lot of confidence in myself because that's the thing I really believe in. But just with my following, I think I could really make a huge statement once I get into the PC. Um, I definitely want to go to the Monster Factory and that's – I think that's where I definitely want to train. Like, I want to move to New Jersey and start a little career there and then get the phone call that I got to try out the PC because I've heard that happen. And I'm like, I can kind of do that if I just keep up. Um, I know that can't happen right now that I can just start training at the PC, but I know I could at least get my foot in the door um, just like possibly getting interviews at access getting a press pass would be awesome that's actually one of my goals this year and possibly being on the red carpet at the hall of fame those are just a few of my goals for now um but just in the future i've set some big goals that are kind of far away and i, I actually have a um, page of like this random notebook i have and it's like goals that i want to do one day or things i want to do one day it was like make into the hall of fame Main event WrestleMania, like all of that little stuff. And I was like, oh my God, I wrote that. That's so funny and cool. So those are kind of like my goals. Um, for now, I'm definitely, once I achieve them, definitely going to make more. Izzy, I have to say, whatever yes. age, a, age aside, the fact that you have such a clear view of what your goals are and where you're going is an inspiration to literally everyone. And I, I am, am 1000% behind you. And if there's anything that we can do, uh, to help you achieve anything, uh, feel free to reach out because you're, you're an inspiration you. to all of us. Thank you so much. Uh, and now that I am feeling incredibly average, um, <laughs> I will, uh, I'm sorry no, I did not mean to make you feel average. Not at all. Not at all. I, I really, I just respect the whole thing. And, and like Landon said, I mean, I'm, you know, we already knew who you were, and and the hot tag has been so so fun to keep up with. But I mean, you're making fans out of people right now, right? And they're gonna want to see you succeed. And if and if you aren't aware where you can follow Izzy, you can do that at it's Izzy Mania uh, on Twitter, on Instagram. She's there for you, so you can absolutely and also YouTube. Also, yes, also YouTube. Yes, thank you for adding that one. Um, <laughs> and what we'll do is we'll throw that into our show notes when we post the episode to make sure that everyone has the link to that stuff so that they can find yes. and and keep up with the hot tag and the heating up and the Q and A's on Fridays because the fact that you have a schedule that you're set to i mean it just wise beyond your years and it's it's phenomenal you're more organized than us thank you <laughs> <laughs> well i think that's another big factor about having your own show i think you have to have consistency and i go out to nxt weekly and hearing that nxt is going to be canceled um since full sale they announced that they're not doing any um big gatherings which is pretty much nxt um it's going to be definitely hard. At first, I was super sad about it. I definitely had some tears because NXT is my home. It's where I go pretty much every single week after school. It brings me so much joy. There are so many great people I've met through NXT. So just hearing that it's going to be gone for a long for I, for me, it's very long. It may be short to others, but for it going that like going away for that long, it's definitely going to be hard. But the hardest part is keeping up with the hot tag. But I figured out a way. I know what I'm going to do. I'm not going to say anything now. I'm definitely going to still do the previews every week. But the Friday um, night or the Friday show is definitely going to be different with the fans. But I figured out a great idea. And you guys will see what how we're going to do it. Can't wait. 
Yeah, we'll be watching. So oh, don't yeah. don't worry about it. Yeah. We're excited to see what you, we're excited to see what you came up with. Um, but Thank as you. as we focus in on uh, what was really a historic moment that's in, an understatement yeah in wwe in nxt for this 30 minute iron man match um you know the way we get there is it, it's a rematch of nxt takeover brooklyn which i don't really want to say a ton about just because something tells me we'll feature it later down the line but um it's a it's a rematch bailey wins the title at nxt takeover brooklyn in what you know is considered and by a lot of people you know the match of the year um that year uh <clears throat> and then we get to NXT TakeOver Brooklyn. It's Sasha's kind of rematch at the championship, and William Regal says that it's going to be a 30-minute Iron Man match. Not only is that going to be the first female Iron Man match in WWE history, but it's also going to be the first time that the females will main event, main event. a TakeOver. Um, at oh, NXT TakeOver Respect. At NXT TakeOver Respect. That's absolutely right. So, so Izzy, I mean, you were... You still are the the one that goes to NXT every week. You you are so familiar with it. Um, at that point, I mean, you you must have been seven or eight years old. How were you? Could you kind of understand how monumental things really were for for what was actually happening at the main event of a takeover? Um. So I definitely knew how big it was just for women in general. Um. I knew that it was super. Like it was just a pivotal moment for just all of us um and just wrestling in general um i remember like just the deep one there was when they were called divas it was pretty much three minute matches and then now bailey and sasha they're having a 30 minute match and they're the main event so that was really big and i'm super happy and honored and proud to be a part of it it meant a lot to me um but just looking back at it now i'm just super um just humble about it because I, like, I get a lot, like, oh, I remember when Sasha stole your bill, and it makes me feel super happy and special inside. So Bailey knew how special this moment was, too. So Bailey actually told the makeup crew on the day of the pay-per-view uh, uh, to make it so that it was okay when she was bawling out crying <laughs> when she won. <laughs> because, I mean, it, it is. I mean, just like you were talking about, this is a huge moment for for women for pro wrestling in general and imagine the immense pressure going into a match like this being the first woman to main yes. event in nxt takeover at, at a huge large profile wwe i mean i just i couldn't imagine i i think that uh you know what really gets me with this is they earned it. You know, there oh, was yeah. there was never a feeling of like, oh, let's give it to them just so that we say we did it, right? It was, they went out there at Brooklyn and tore the house down. Mm -hmm. And you had no other choice but to put them as no, main you, event. Yeah, exactly. You had no choice. I mean, this was, this was the hottest feud going into the show. It was the biggest rivalry. And they were the two of the most over people on the card. And that's, Easy. that's where they rightfully belong. And I have to say, Sasha's heel championship run... Up to like before this, leading up to this, is my favorite NXT Women's Championship run. She just has, mm -hmm. I mean, the best swagger, the best attitude, and some of the best matches during that run. And she's, and she's having fun, and you can tell she's you can having tell. fun. <laughs> how do you, how actually, you know, I'm kind of curious about this, Izzy. You know, obviously, there it's been documented, and everyone knows um, that you know Bailey was was definitely and we're not we're not going to call it a phase right but Bailey was definitely your uh you know kind of who you who you cheered for for sure uh at NXT during this time period how did you feel about Sasha Banks then um i definitely hated her <laughs> <laughs> yeah and that was before but, this match uh, but like before the match um i like still hated her because I was like, Oh my God, she has the belt. Bailey better beat her. Like, and everything like that. Um, but at house show, she would always talk crap to me. Um, at one of them, it was actually Bailey versus Sasha for the NXT Women's championship. And she was talking trash to me and I was like, Oh my God, I hate her so much. So I pretty much hated her before the match. <laughs> so it's not like this one made, things any better i, I, I don't <laughs> think I feel like sasha was that mean yeah i'm telling you 
Uh, you know what I love is uh, the video prompt package for this oh, for this match. It's so good. It's incredible. And and the quote that that I get from it that that sticks with me is uh, Sasha Banks says, "You know, everybody's cheering for Bailey, and that's all great for everyone except me." And she looks at Bailey and says, "You're still not me." Wow, it's really good. <laughs> that's I mean, insult. the the hype video. It was so hype. It it was kind of long. But I did not care. It was so it perfectly encapsulated their rivalry. I agree. We get the classic, um, you know, workout montage. Yes, we're we're, we're, tra- we're training for an Iron Man match, so we're going to show them working out, and I think that's fantastic. And you get the uh, backstage kind of as as we get set oh, for the actual match itself. You get the the backstage Goldberg walks the yes, walk to Gorilla. That was yeah, and perfect. it's did you guys hear the music that went yeah, with that? It sounded like I was music. like, are they dropping the Hell in a Cell from the yeah. ceiling? Is that, is that <laughs> the, the same music? Music. It was, it was so cool. I mean, it gives it a big match feel, right? I wish they would do this more often, where you like you see them. Okay, here we go. Like, and then the music hits, and then it cuts to the like the entrance way. They don't do that for anybody else, and I really wish they would do that more often, especially for championship matches. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Totally agree with that. Um, just as a reminder for those of you who who haven't seen it in a while, or, or maybe for some reason I've never seen the match. I don't know why that would happen. But uh, on commentary, we have Rich Brennan. Remember him? Uh, Byron Saxton and Corey Graves, and uh, the referee. Danilo and and uh, Fibio. I had his name in my head several times, and I knew I would botch it. And there it was. So, uh, so what I just heard was you had Corey Graves with a whole bunch of people on his back. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, that's that's well, what I. That's not like, quite what I said. Well, he was. I mean, he was his normal self, but he wasn't being mean to Byron the entire time. So I kind of forgot Byron was there. <laughs> that's that's a good point. So Izzy, I think this is a good time to point out uh, one of the things that yes. we like we we do a deep dive into matches on our on our episodes, and one of the things that Spencer is really good about is recognizing everybody who is part of the production, everyone who's uh, on screen. And so we got the name of the referee, we got the name of the commentary team. How important is it to you that you have excellent commentary? Um, I think they really extend the moment and they make you feel a certain way. I think the like one person that really does that job well is Marlonello and NXT right now. Um just when he says Mamma Mia, you know when it's like <laughs> a holy poop moment. Um but I think commentary just like the really good people in the business, they they do so good about making us feel like, oh my God, this moment is awesome. Like this is actually happening. And it also the business side, it helps people who didn't really get to see like before, like let's say they're watching SmackDown at eight, they just started watching SmackDown at eight thirty and they're playing the replay and then the commentators they're telling you what's happening. I think that's the good business side about it and that's what they're kind of there for. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. There, it's it's such a, a necessary uh, part of the production, and I think Corey Graves in particular does. A fantastic oh, he's job. great. Yeah, and the way the way Corey Graves, and it's the same way for the Brooklyn match. The way he talks about Sasha Banks, I mean, how could you not buy yeah, into how he is? Right? Yeah, exactly. yeah, absolutely. It's, it's so good. Iron Man. Uh, uh, interests Iron Man interests match. happen. Uh, they come out. Sasha Banks. Um, I call this. I to describe this is my favorite Sasha attires that they're wearing I, cause I think because they're I call it the, one of the Sasha Pink Lemonade Bailey, and <laughs> I love it so much. Well, this was the color scheme she had when she debuted. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so it kind of all comes back to this moment. I feel like every piece of this production was extremely intentional and well thought out so because they there was a lot of weight there was a lot of gravity to this moment it was a big deal yeah couldn't agree more uh sasha comes on down bailey comes on down bailey on her way down to the ring um she she hugs you izzy on her yes. way down absolutely uh because you are sitting there with your uh with your mom and dad who uh mm-hmm. are phenomenal people and uh and also with bailey's family is that right yes um they we asked them we were like hey do you want to come to with us and they were like yeah sure we knew it was a very special moment for them so we we absolutely did not mind mm. yeah i think uh well, and i guess i'll get to to bailey's dad later but um the 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 commentary team makes note to say you know that's bailey's family and and bailey's biggest fan izzy you know like they the commentary team wants you to know um you know that that's that's who they are and that's that's what's important um the 
championship graphic and this is what i always point out <laughs> but i it should be noted oh, that really they it. yeah it's really good because the championship graphic when they flash the nxt championship on screen on the background is still bailey's uh yes, buddies the, the bailey buddies, buddies. Are going. <laughs> and so they're going on behind the title and i'm like this is how it should look every time it looks phenomenal and yeah, see I'm to me buddies. to me it was kind of cartoonish i did uh, not love no, this perfect. this championship graphic boo <laughs> boo <laughs> <laughs> uh so Bailey is really interesting when she gets into the ring because they want to make out her confidence. And as she is, you know, she's starting to take off the jacket, but she's doing her wave to the crowd. She actually moves Sasha away. Did you notice this? Yeah, Paul. She she kind of like <laughs> motions for like Sasha a, to get out like of the way. Clear the way. This is my oh, ring. yes. I remember this. Yeah, I thought it was really good just because it showed some growth in Bailey, I think, because Definitely. that's something that she would not have done before. But now she's champion and you're going to do what she says. What was the yes. what was the energy like to be in that room for this huge moment? Oh, wow. It was it was like there it wasn't I don't want to say tense, but it was like, oh my god, this is actually happening. Um, I knew everybody was super excited, you know, like everybody was like, man, it's actually happening. He had the Sasha fans and he had the hardcore Bailey fans. So definitely it was a really cool vibe to be in the arena. Yeah. I mean, you bring up a really good point is one of the best parts about going to a show at full sale is the crowd is the crowd. Yes. It's it's you. It is almost guaranteed a 50-50 split for <laughs> yeah. every match, regardless heel, face, whatever. Well, what I really loved about the crowd is when they come out, they just start chanting main event yep. and then women's wrestling. I'm like, here we go. They, they they chant women's wrestling, and I I got goosebumps. Oh, yeah, I did too. Like, I go, they start chanting women's wrestling, main event. You deserve this. That was the big one for me. But once the match starts, it does kind of go back and forth into the, we have our Sasha fans, we have our Bailey fans, and then we just have our wrestling fans who are just going to be loud and show support. And I'm like, man, I miss these kinds of crowds. Right? I, mean, I know we still get them in NXT, but I wish we could get crowds like this more often. <laughs> As the match starts, um, it's sort of like they're trading pinfall attempts back and oh, forth, yeah. which is a really fun start. But you know, you talk about Corey Graves, Landon, about how he sort of carries it. And I think he makes a really, really interesting point in the very beginning of the match. Because Byron says, uh, look, I'm not just uh, a hugging super fan anymore. She's, he's talking about what Bailey had said to him. Uh, look, I'm not just a hugging super fan anymore. I am a girl living my dream as a women's champion. There's a newfound confidence, uh, and you're going to see it in Bailey here tonight. Uh, and then Corey Graves responds by saying, people seem to overlook the fact that Sasha Banks has the same dream. Wow. Oof. So good. And it's interesting because... How do you argue with that? I know. Yeah, I know. Like, Corey, like, Sasha Banks is definitely the heel, but Corey's trying to make you see, like, listen, she's just a person trying to accomplish the same goal. Yeah. yeah. She's, and she's dangerous. But, she, but she's smart. She has a different... She has a different tactic, and maybe some people would call that dirty, call it cheating, call it whatever you want. She is getting it done. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the 30 minutes start... And um, and it's kind of back and forth, like I said in the beginning, until Sasha kind of strikes first with the first drop kick. Oh yes. Um, and Bailey, as she tries to get momentum back, does these arm drags. Did y'all see these? Oh, these oh, big, yeah. oh, Japanese arm drags. These Japanese oh. arm drags. Sasha Banks on the second one almost lands on the top of her head. I thought she did, and I was like, "Oh wait, my lord!" And then they showed the replay, and I'm like, "Oh, okay, she's okay, but they're gonna sound like she." Yeah, it was tough. Uh, I, I don't know if you remember that, Izzy. It was kind of early on in the match, and it's kind of a specific thing, but she looked like uh, Sasha Banks was was done for early, just off of that arm drag. Yes, it, she really did. So th there's one point early on where you're talking about their trading pins. Bailey, uh, there's a backslide where she keeps the arms trapped after it's only a two count, and then immediately rolls into a small package. I mean, it's just the... You you get the sense that there's a true mastery oh, yeah. of what they're doing here. It's almost as if this is their like final exam, and they are <laughs> showing off. Well, after that, she does like a jackknife cover that immediately gets turned to an inside cradle. So there is like, okay, we got some really good wrestling here. This is awesome. And it's not just the technical wrestling ability. Uh, you see this great storytelling element, oh, and yeah. this great dynamic between uh, their characters. So. There's this, I love the shot, and the camera work here is great. I love the shot of Bailey, who is in the corner, kind of cowering, 
and then the cameraman stands over her shoulder and captures Sasha standing over her. And it just, she's so menacing. Yeah. Oh, she absolutely is. Because Sasha, most of the time, she's going to be in your face yelling about how good she is. (laughs) And when she's, yes, exactly. But when she's not, she's just got that look. Well, she she owns the ring. She does. It's her ring. She's the boss, and that's the way it is. Uh, the first fall, um, is, is an interesting one. Yeah. What do you think, Paul? Oh, I was so angry. I'm like, how dare you? (laughs) (laughs) She got to to take her eyes out. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Of course, Ref didn't see it. He was too big. Like, oh, she's blocking his view. It's a great heel move ultimately. So, um, Sasha ends up getting in in the turnbuckle in front of Danilo, the referee, who is a great ref, by the way, even if I can't say his name. And <laughs> uh, and when Bailey comes to try to get Sasha off the turnbuckle, oh, she just goes straight for the eye. I got so worked up by this. I was like, no, not it's like that. Shame. And I'm like, oh, it's an Iron Man match. Okay. <laughs> I yeah. calm down. So we're only nine minutes in, about eight and a half minutes in, and Sasha gets the first pin. Does the air kind of go out of the NXT arena at that point, Izzy? Was that kind of a stressful, like, oh, my gosh, you know, Sasha's up one nothing. This this might not go like we think it will. Um, for the fans who like Sasha, they were really, really excited. But then for the people who loved Bailey, they were like, "Oh no, we're going down. This yeah. this ship is going down." <laughs> yeah, it was kind of a scary moment. I mean, but what I love is, and a lot of people like t- are talking trash about Sasha here because her the first fall in this you know huge huge match is not does not come from you know some technical wrestling. It's an eye poke, dirty move, but. Yeah. Did you catch the Easter egg that she threw in before she did this? Mm-mm. Sasha hits a Lucha top rope arm drag as a nice little hat tip to the one and only Eddie Guerrero. Oh, yeah. I was, I was going to point out that she they do these brilliant Lucha sequence, and I'm like, oh, that is beautiful. It is. It's. is. I'm telling you, from start to finish, this is a master class in professional wrestling. This is, Izzy, if you're trying to study some product, uh, this is a really good match to go back and watch, and I'm yes. sure you're familiar with it. Uh, you know, you talk about the Eddie Guerrero moment and, and, and how this is, this matches us is a, is a, you know, a, a masterclass in, in wrestling, but I think it's as good as it is in, in like wrestling. I think it's that much better in storytelling. I think so. Um, just because of the way this match sort of unfolds, uh, these two wrestlers, they know each other so well, um, that when they go for their signature moves, like Sasha goes for the double knees in the corner and that it's like, nope. it's reversed. Out of the way. And and they just go back and forth until all of a sudden out of nowhere, uh Bailey hits the Bailey to belly and catches Got catches it. Sasha just like that. It's been two minutes since the other fall and we're now tied at one. Uh with nineteen minutes and six seconds to go. We're tied at one just like that. But what you need to note there is that Sasha then rolls out of the ring because that's where we're going. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bailey goes for an apron drop kick. Oh, yeah. The slime drop kicks. I always love this. Yeah. So that's one of the things. NXT is known for kind of having this innovative offense. You're going to see moves on NXT that, for some reason, you don't see on main roster. Nope. Um, But this, what did you call it? Apron drop kick. So it's also like a baseball slide. It's a baseball slide. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Corey said a sliding drop kick. So I I wrote down sliding drop kick. Sure. So. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. It's the one. It's the one where she goes kind of underneath the turnbuckle. It reminded me of how um, uh, Sami Zayn would do the the, the running tornado. tornado. DT, yes, DT. I'm exactly. Like, okay, I just, I, I, exactly. I, I always, that's right because I forgot they both did this similar sequences. And I, well, she goes for it a couple of too many times, and uh, whew. Yeah, Sasha Banks Ooh. catches her and decides to then toss her into the steps which rich brennan then points out is right by bailey's biggest fan izzy me that's you (laughs) (laughs) do you remember this whenever they they really took it to the outside and she hits those steps really hard right in front of you i mean i was like oh okay i was like bailey get up do something well we definitely hear you screaming uh (laughs) come on bailey let's go bailey uh but uh, what Mm -hmm. i loved here was you know, we talked about Sasha's look, like her face. She has this menacing uh, heel, and, and it's almost like she has the psychological edge over Bailey early on here. And yes, and I feel like that's important because Bailey works best as an underdog. Yeah. So maybe unpopular opinion: I am not a fan of Bailey as a champion because 
she's sort of great. She made it there. She achieved what she was set out to do. But then, you know, what happens then? Whenever your underdog has then conquered the beast, that's a great moment then. But I feel like she doesn't evolve much after that, which is why I'm a huge fan of current day Bailey. Which I, brings me to an interesting question. Um, is he, and we talked a little bit about, about this at the rumble, uh, but current, current Bailey, you know, obviously a heel, um, you know, the haircut, the whole look is, is it something that you like? I, I know obviously the jets have cooled off in terms of super fan for Bailey. Um, and that's for lots of reasons, but uh, how do you feel about her character right now? I definitely have mixed feelings on the whole heel. Um, I think mean, I've really been wanting to see the heel Bailey. I just don't like the haircut. I feel like she's not heel enough, and she just looks super out of place. Yeah, my wife Hope doesn't buy it at all. <laughs> she's like, well, I felt like whenever they had her come out on TV and like kill the Bailey buddies, I felt like that was like an overcorrection. Maybe. Like, oh, you don't believe her? Watch this. And I'm like, okay, I bought that, but I haven't bought anything else that she's done since then. <laughs> because I just, I feel like, I don't, not necessarily that her heart's not in it, but I, I feel like she is being told exactly what to do, and I don't think that's the way to handle it. I think it's like, hey, go out there and just be you. Yeah. I kind of feel like it's not enough of that right now. Yeah, I kind of get that. I don't know. I, I go back and forth. I think for the most part, I'm pleased with, with the work. I definitely buy her more as a champion. Yeah. It, Izzy, it, I know you've had the chance to do some, some heel work, right, in some, in some of your indie appearances. How much fun has that been? Um, my indie appearances are a lot of fun because I get to meet so many new people that are so talented and know what they're doing. It's like, that's the cool part about it. And I also get some really nice interviews, which is, the fun part. Yeah, I bet so. I it's I mean again, like it's just the fact that those opportunities are arising is really 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 fun. Um and any chance you get to play the bad guy just is is a good time. It has to be, right? Yes, it is. Um cuz I get to say stuff that I'm really not allowed to say like <laughs> people, Yeah. <laughs> you get to kind of do what Sasha does to you in this moment. Uh, you know, S- Sasha Pretty throws much. Bailey into the steps and then just commences to yell at you. And uh, and she like she like slams her into like the the LED wall. And I'm like, come on. And then she gets counted. And then Bailey gets counted out. I'm like, are you kidding me? Right, right. Oh, you get a fall on a count out. And Sasha on her way back to the ring. I mean, this is the the infamous part, right? She she takes your your headband off. Which was rude yeah. and inappropriate. That's horrible. And mm-hmm. takes it off, goes into the ring, is is basically <laughs> mocking puts it you, on, and puts like, it oh. on while Bailey gets counted out to ten. I mean, just pure evil. Yes, it was pure evil. I was crying in the moment. I don't really know why, but it's just I don't really understand why she had to do that. She could have just asked. <laughs> well that's not that's not a heel move a heel <laughs> would yeah. you have given her your bow if she asked for it yeah i think i would <laughs> <laughs> now now that you have kind of had some chances to to kind of get in the ring whether it's been at any appearances or you know the amateur wrestling you've been doing and stuff like that um and mm-hmm. as as you kind of interview all these all these superstars uh do you kind of appreciate it now in retrospect a little bit more what she did or is it still like that was so rude i can't believe she did it um, I definitely think, I, I think it's like, I think it has really helped me because without that moment, I really didn't think I would like, would be in the same spot I am right now. If she didn't steal my bow, that makes sense. You know, if yeah. she didn't steal it, like none of this have, would have happened. So that's what I, I really think that started everything, which I'm super grateful for. And I'm just super honored and happy that it happened because it gave me a lot of confidence and it gave me so many more opportunities than I would have had if I was just some girl loving Bailey. I am ready for Izzy Mania versus Sasha Banks. <laughs> the story yes. the story writes itself. It really does. <laughs> Can you imagine the promo package for that thing? Yeah. I'm ready. <laughs> oh boy. That's the I mean we'll cover it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll still be going. Yeah. 
Um, so Sasha gets the gets the count out victory. She goes up two to one, and then the next little bit while Bailey gets her way back into the ring is still focused on Izzy. Um, it's still fo- focused on you because Sasha then throws the headband back towards your direction. Um, this is rude. Uh, you're so rude. Like you're, now you're crying. Your your dad is holding you. Um, yes. and it's just, I mean, it's, it's almost hard to watch. It kind of is. <laughs> it, I can understand why. Cause seeing a kid cry like that, it's the worst thing in the world. Well, and it just, it sells Sasha Banks as the one monster. of the worst heels in the business at this point. Uh, and it really makes everybody invested in the match because that's, that's one of the things that, that you did was like. You really helped people get invested in this match from start to finish. Um, so, and I think that moment in particular was really, really important. Yeah, I, I, w- I would definitely agree with that. Um, it, two things happen soon thereafter. One of them is the Sasha's Ratchet No She's Not chant starts, which is just one <laughs> of my was, favorites. I, I couldn't remember what they were saying there. I'm like, what are yeah, they saying? Yeah, Sasha's Ratchet. That was kind of the thing when she was kind of coming up before she got to the main roster was Sasha's Ratchet. Well, no, it, Izzy started that chant. <laughs> yeah. Is that is that true? Um, it was actually just my whole family. Oh, <laughs> fantastic! It was a good chance. It was. It's the best one. Uh, one of my favorite things here is that uh, Sasha breaks up the Boston Crab, and she's from Boston, so I feel like this is a natural finish for her. I love. Hey, it. that's a good point. It's a high angle Boston Crab. Too. Oh yeah, it looks really it, good. It does. Uh, right before the Boston Crab happens, I, I do want to make note of a little storytelling thing. Um, Bailey is in the in the turnbuckle and she's she's sitting down in the turnbuckle and Sasha walks up to her to talk trash in her face and it's a and it's a callback to their Brooklyn match because Bailey in the Brooklyn match kicks Sasha in the face in that oh, moment right. and then gets up to to, I, to get a Bailey to belly or whatever it was in the moment. God, like Sasha catches the kick. Yeah, Sasha catches oh. it at respect and uh, it delivers this this Shawn Michaels esque backbreaker. You know what I'm you know what I mean? Like yes. Shawn Michaels Triple H backbreaker. That's that's what it was. Um, and I just thought that was a, a brilliant little little nugget, kind of a callback to their to their Brooklyn match that I really, really liked. Uh, but then but then you're right, the Boston Crab happens and uh, just when you think Bailey might submit and go down three to one, that's not what happens at all. Nope. She just gets this desperation pin out of nowhere, and then all of a sudden, oh no, now here you go. It's two to two. Yeah, it's almost like Bailey pops up and locks her legs underneath uh, Sasha's arms, and it's like an inverted victory roll. I've never seen yeah, a pin it was like, like that. It's like a victory roll from the floor. Right. It looked really, really good. But yeah, and you see the pin, and Sasha's not getting out of that thing. No, like it, it, no it, one's it, getting out of that. No one's getting out of that. Uh, so we're tied at two with 12 minutes to go. Uh, and they show they show you Izzy, and now you're back, and you're happy, and you're ready, and yeah. and and so it goes. Um, you, you know what I love? I love a double knees in the corner from Sasha Banks. Ugh. And I love whenever she misses it. I loved when <laughs> Sasha goes for the double knees in the corner like she always does, and and completely misses. And so when when her knees hit the mat, you just see this anguish on her face. It was such a well uh ti- the timing was perfect. Oh, yeah. It was like it's like you deserve this. <laughs> you know, Corey Graves goes into this and says, this is the moment. You know, there's 9 minutes left in this match or so. We're tied at 2. This is all about who trained harder, who wants it more. You know, like we're digging down into our reserves and they're really building up the fact that um, this is this is the big time. Like this oh, yeah. is this is what's going to decide it is what happens in the next couple minutes. And uh, just like as, as he's giving this speech, Bailey just fires up. Like she just uh, this flurry. Like she gets she gets uh, double axe hammers. She gets the running back elbow. And then she gets the diving back elbow off the top rope. I'm like here we go. She's going to do it. She's going to win. Yeah, I mean she has this awesome diving reverse elbow off the second rope that it's gets, uh, and it actually earns her a uh, women's wrestling chant. Ugh. Yes, I was so happy you mentioned that. And then uh, I was wondering what she was going to do here, and I forgot she does the suplex into the tree of woe. Yes, <laughs> forgot about this one. And she darts across the ring. So so Sasha's in the tree of woe, and Bailey darts across the ring and hits a springboard off the bottom rope, yeah, she twists off. in mid-air to deliver that sharp elbow drop. It's, it's so beautiful. It's amazing. <laughs> oh, man. The, uh, the momentum is clearly in Bailey's side, right? Like, she's taking control of this match. We're kind of dwindling down nine, eight, seven minutes or so. Um, Sasha tries to get Bailey into the Tree of Woe, but ends up hitting the ring post when she runs at her. Oh, uh, yeah. Brutal. And Sasha gets out of the ring. 
Um, at this moment, we're kind of back in that corner right in front of you, Izzy. And Bailey yeah. starts moving the steps and starts attacking uh, Sasha's hand, smacking yeah, Sasha's hand on the steps. On those steps. And then she does like a step up clothesline. I'm like, yes, off the stairs. Well, you start to see the strategy play here because right. she knows uh, the, cl- the clock is ticking. I've got to do something that's going to just going to help. And she kind of has offensive defense at this point, I'd like to call okay. it. Okay. Yeah. So if she's attacking the hands. But the hand, of course, is a callback to the Brooklyn match. There you go. Because if you remember Brooklyn, Bailey's hand was coming off of an injury. And the, the you know one of the big memories that you remember from Brooklyn is Sasha having the bank statement in on Bailey and just stomping at her hand, oh. um, and also you know crushing Bailey's hand in between the steps and the ring. So it's kind of a callback to that moment here. And to layer on top of that, you have to think it's strategy, right? Because no hands, you can't lock in the bank no statement. bank statement, and that exactly. does play into the finish. I think. Yeah, uh, Sasha is able to get away from the steps because she pushes Bailey into the steps. She goes back into the ring and she goes for a, for a dive. So, you know, goes for a tope. Goes for a tope. Bailey, Bailey catches her. Catches her and delivers the Bailey to Bailey. I'm like, yes. And that starts my favorite chant of the whole match. Iron Woman. Yes. <laughs> Iron Woman. Uh, Izzy, the crowd was on fire. I mean, NXT crowds are always great. But, uh, you know, in yes. the, how, much do you, how much do you love being part of that crowd then and now? Um, it, I think it's just the fans and the chants that they... Um, come up with um, they are so clever and the chance that they make like the Keith Lee right now oh that's have, my favorite Ugh. Um, they have Isaiah Swerve they have an Isaiah Swerve Scott one what's that um, one what is it it's I can't remember I'm sorry no no it's okay I, I heard I, it this, it's based off a song I know that we'll have to do some it's research something about like his house okay you, I think it's you can hear it during um, NXT this past Wednesday, but it's really I like it a lot. It's really cool and clever, um, and then just like just the chance that they come up with, and then they have the hey, we want some Bailey, yeah. and just like those, they that's what makes it super special. Do I, I actually have this question? Is it kind of the same people every time that go? Um, yes, pretty much. And then when you see. Um, new people it's kind of cool and you're like hey welcome so it's like you're you're, it's one big happy family yes definitely um it's cool when like people come up to me and they're like hey when do your doors open and then they'll be like oh we're here for our honeymoon i'm like oh my god you came here for your honeymoon (laughs) like that's that's great but for your honeymoon like well the problem the problem is is that that just gave me a wonderful idea. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. The missus is a pretty big wrestling fan. Yeah, that might work. Man, that's that's fascinating. Um, I I have uh, so many NXT questions for you. I'll get to it in a minute. (laughs) Let's kind of go, because the last six or seven minutes of this match is near perfection. It's incredible stuff. Um, There's a Bailey to Belly off of the second rope that you think surely will be fall number three. Nope, but Sasha's foot almost inadvertently finds the bottom rope. Yeah. It's so well done. Because cause surely she wouldn't have kicked out, oh, right? Oh, no. So, the, so it has to hit the bottom rope. And then the crowd is losing their minds <laughs> because how could that not have gotten a pinfall? And as if the crowd couldn't get crazier... They tease the reverse Rana. Oh no, she from the top. It. She does it. <laughs> she well, yeah. she does it, but Sasha, Sasha lands on her feet. Lands on her feet. Could you imagine? Oh. And how angry do you get when Sasha Banks hits a Bailey to belly on Bailey? Oh. <laughs> I was like, how dare you? Like, you have the audacity to do that? Mm, you it's, got problems. It's the ultimate insult. Oh, it is. Yeah. You're stealing yeah. somebody's move. A- and Bailey kicks out, and the the crowd doesn't even have time to breathe because the second she kicks out, she starts and and puts Bailey into the bank, bank statement. statement. And we and we have less than two minutes, and it's very frantic now. And I would like to point out, Izzy, that in that moment when Sasha has the bank statement on Bailey, if you look over uh, Sasha's shoulder on the broadcast, the only thing you see are uh, are Jenny and Cody, your parents, with their hands over their mouth. <laughs> <laughs> they are in shock about what's happening. And, and it looks like, from from my opinion, it looks like everyone thinks that, oh, yeah, oh no. There's not enough time left. She is in the, in the middle of the ring. It's, it's like 90 seconds to time, go. Yeah, 90 seconds, and like she can't break it. And by gosh, she does break it. 
Yeah, but the reason she's able to break it is because the damage the that she does on yeah. the hand. Yeah, it, uh, before before this moment, Bailey s- actually spikes Sasha's finger straight yeah. into the mat. I yeah. mean, that hurts just thinking about. Well, there's a point where Corey points out that if you look at the way Sasha's in the bank, she doesn't have her normal grip. She's grabbing her wrist. Her her left hand is loose. Yeah. And she, she uses that to her advantage. Uh, what ends up happening is Bailey grabs at her fingers, kind of rips them apart, um, and is able to to turn the whole thing around into her, uh, a submission of her own. Bailey puts her in an ar- puts Sasha Banks in an, a sort of a modified armbar. Yeah, I almost thought she put it in like, the rings of Saturn. I'm like, whoa. But yeah, like, but she's holding a finger. Yeah, she's holding her hand, and she's like, like just contorting that hand. Which is funny because it's like a solid two years where we get Pete Dunn doing the same thing. Here's Bailey doing it. Well, sure, but it made sense because that is what she had yeah. been targeting for the second half of the match, and, with, and so that's that's what won her the match. Yeah, and with, with a few seconds left, Sasha couldn't handle it. She taps out. I'm like, yes, yeah, like what, three to two, two two seconds left. There's a little bit more than that. I think it, I think she officially gave the official with there's like five or six left. So Izzy, being there and witnessing that moment, obviously your back was turned to the big clock. Did you know what happened in that moment when the bell rang? Um, I definitely, like, I was so relieved when that happened. And then um, <laughs> they had everybody come out, like, every, like all the NXT superstars. Um, Bailey, she stood in the ring. I think Triple H went in there. And she walked out. She gave me a big hug. Then both, Sasha was already, like, with the NXT superstars. And then Bailey went to the back. They hugged. They gave them these huge flowers, and then here comes Sasha with the biggest bouquet of flowers I've ever seen. It's, like, bigger than my whole little eight-year-old body, (laughs) and she fist bumps me, and she gives me this bouquet of flowers, and I'm like, I'm like, after, like, stealing my bow. After everything you just did? (laughs) Yeah, like... I am this, getting like, emotional. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, oh, she gave like, you she gave you that big bouquet? Yes. I think I still have some of the roses. They're so disgusting. And I know I still have the bow that tied all the flowers together because we just wanted to keep something from it. So yeah. Can you uh, can you imagine? You need to see my face right now. Just think about this. Think <laughs> think about this. Sasha Banks versus Izzy Mania. But Izzy's got the bow in her hair <laughs> from that oh, bouquet of flowers. Oh, that'd be amazing! <laughs> oh my gosh, I that is I did not know that. That is incredible. So yeah. after we uh, after we talk about matches, the next uh, part of the show is we 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 say what's our favorite moments, and I'm going to go first because the absolute favorite moment of this entire show, or, or one of my favorite moments in NXT history is after the match, the first thing the camera does is cut to you, Izzy. <laughs> and yeah. you're immediately crying and, and just overjoyed. I was. And I started sobbing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just one of the greatest overall stories oh, I, I agree. ever told as far as how where Bailey came from. And how the fans were so far behind her. And you represented those fans. And you represented the heart uh, of all of the wrestling fans around the world who was cheering for, for Bailey. And to see that moment, that emotion uh, in that moment uh, represented, it, it, I just I couldn't handle it. I was <laughs> and in case you weren't emotional enough, you look at the stage. Oh, everybody's out there. And you know who's crying? William Regal. Oh no! Oh, man. Wait, really? I yeah. yes. that. Regal's yes. crying. Uh, Regal is like full on tears down his face, and I mean, if he's crying, you, you, you know have to cry. Those are the rules. Well, for me, like watching when the camera cuts back to the stage, and then there's William, and then the Triple H are there, and then Stephanie, who's also like in tears, and then uh, they're consoling Sasha, and I'm like, don't console her, <laughs> <laughs> let her cry. Well, no, there's a moment. So, so you said. Uh, when we talked about how uh, Sasha got the big bouquet from William Regal. So William Regal's holding the bouquet and then Sasha looks up at him and then she sees that he has tears in his eyes and that was it. She, yeah. <laughs> she is on the floor. Like that, she can't, that, that, she can't hold it anymore. That got me too. I'm and, like, this is really emotional. And to know that that bouquet goes to Izzy afterwards. I can't just, believe it. Yeah. The I mean, the very best thing I've ever heard. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Izzy, do you have a favorite moment from that night? Um, 
I definitely want to say it was. I don't, that's gonna, it's gonna sound crazy when she took my bill because like that was like a big moment for me. I was like, oh my god, like this is actually happening. So I definitely think that was the biggest moment for me, just personally and on a just like wrestling like standard because like I said before, it started everything for me. Like I got the opportunity, I got this and that. Um, you know, people ask me questions about that. Like this whole match, like, did you know? Did you like, like, why did you cry? Like, I get questions about that. So that really gave me a lot of opportunities to just really big things in my life. That's really awesome. <laughs> I'm it's sorry. Just, I'm, it's just I'm, I'm, I'm it actually is. getting a little emotional myself. Uh, I think for me personally, I think my favorite moment is actually the stare down. At the very beginning, oh, you gotta love the, it. With the whole crowd is just on it as a like a ten, and then uh, after that, like the both uh, when she catches Sasha from the suicide dive, mm-hmm. and then whenever uh, they do the top rope one, and then the of course the even though even though Sasha reversed it, the the top rope uh, Bailey can run it, and then uh, honestly, just the moment at the end when the entire roster is out there and people are crying and there's bouquets and flowers, like okay, this is just a beautiful moment that encapsulates a. I know it's a cliche, but a, just a glass shattering moment is such a big deal for wrestling. And I just appreciated that after the match was over, everybody treated it like, okay, this is a really big deal. So we're going to have this like ceremony here. And I'm like, this is, this is so grand and it's just so, it's so special. And that just was really important to me as a fan. Yeah, I absolutely. Um, I think for me, I think the, the ending sequence of the match is my favorite um, just because it's fast. It's quick. It's, you have no idea what the heck's going to happen. Um, and I, I always love that. And I think this, the story they told as a whole in this match from start to finish, um, is just beautiful and so well done. And, and I just really, really appreciated it for that. So that, that's what I kind of remember from it the most. Uh, but this will bring us to what is inevitably the most difficult part of every show. Yep. (laughs) And Izzy, I am so sorry if this becomes very difficult because it is, has, it has been so hard for us week in and week out, uh, but it's time for us to rank this oh. match. Ooh. This is the hardest part of the show. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, Izzy, I sent you the list. There's 31 currently. Uh, and this okay, will. Pull this, it up. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Pull it up. This is, is going to be entry number 32 on our list of the 100 greatest wrestling matches of all time to this moment. Um, to this moment. And um, it's. It's going to be a tough one to rank, guys. Paul, you said, though, at the start uh, I, of this that you know exactly where you want. I know exactly want. where I'm going to put it, but I would like to do our normal spiel we do here, which is, of course, obviously, is this top 30? Well, obviously, yes. Yeah, I think it'll I think it'll go over uh, Kurt Angle and Shane McMahon. Oh, yeah, and it's like, oh, is this top 20? Oh, absolutely. Landon, you're good with top 20? I think so. I think this is definitely top 20 for me. Yes. Okay, okay. So then, you know, the, the hard part. Is it top 10 material? Um, number number ten as things stand right now is John Cena versus Shawn Michaels. Ugh. Is he? Have you seen that one from Monday Night Raw two thousand seven? It's like it's it's, an, it's about an no. hour long. That was actually the year I was born. So now I have to get back to <laughs> up. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, uh, that's a pretty good one too. Um, yeah, definitely would recommend. Definitely go watch it. It's about an hour long. Um, but it you know it, it's the longest singles match in Monday Night Raw history, which is kind of very fun. true. It's only a little bit longer than this match. Um, but since I was so confident from what I said before, uh, the whole time I was watching this match, um, the only thing I could really think of was the triple threat for the women's title a year later. And mm-hmm. I said, you know what? I think this is a superior match to that one. That is a grander scale, but this one did it first, mm-hmm. and I would actually put it above that at number 13. Okay, uh, Izzy, the Charlotte Sasha Banks Becky Lynch match from WrestleMania 32. Um, yes. Yes. How how do you feel about that match, just in general? Um, I thought it was a really big history making moment in general because they were kind of, they were kind of headlining, and then it was also the start to the women's division. So I think that's a big history making moment. Yeah, I think that's a really great point. How do you think this match compares to that one? And like, do you think if we were if you were ranking the two of them, which one which one is higher for you? Um, I'm going to be honest, I would put the Iron Woman match because it started all of this women's division. If it wasn't that match, then would we even have the women's division? Probably yes, but you never know because some weird things can happen. 
So you and I are on the same page right now. <laughs> and you know, I, I don't want I don't want to to be like a, a bandwagon guy, but actually, that's exactly where exactly. I was putting it. Really? Um, so oh wow! I, I don't think it would it would surpass the top ten. I don't think it jumps into the top ten, and I don't think it's quite on the you know stratosphere as a Magnum TA Tully Blanchard. You know, I'm doing my crawl down. Um, so I guess the really difficult part for me was: am I putting it at twelve or thirteen? And obviously, it's easier to put it next to the other match in which Sasha Banks is a part. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, and the Shinsuke Nakamura versus Kota Ibushi. Um, Izzy, have you had a chance to watch any of New Japan Pro Wrestling? Um, I've heard of it, but no, and I'm super sorry about that. No, 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 no. Do totally... not apologize. I, I am I am by far on this show the weakest link in terms of New <laughs> Japan Pro Wrestling. <laughs> yeah, and, and Dustin's raising his hand. So do not feel bad about that at all. Part of part of the fun of making this list has been being able to reach out and watch stuff that we're not familiar with. Yeah, we, we watched World of Sport matches for this. <laughs> right, yeah, right. Yeah, you look at our list and there's a match from, what was it, 1970? Yeah, 1978, yeah. You know, so <laughs> uh, it's been really fun to sort of expand our horizon. So do not at all feel bad about not being super familiar with New Japan um, because it's something that, uh, you know, I'm also getting familiar with myself. And so the reason I bring it up is the match that's right above the Charlotte-Sasha-Becky match is the Shinsuke Nakamura versus Kota Ibushi, whom you may be familiar with both of those names, actually, because Kota competed in the Cruiserweight Classic, and Shinsuke is on SmackDown currently. But at Wrestle Kingdom 9, New Japan's uh, version of WrestleMania, you could you could say, uh, they had an awesome, awesome match. And that's currently ranked at number 12. And I don't know that I can... In- good conscience put uh this match above uh their that wrestle kingdom nine clash so so i'm gonna agree i'm gonna agree i'm gonna go 13 i am i'm going to say and this is actually really interesting because i think this is going to pit sort of a and i, and I don't want it to be because it's not a wwe versus new japan conversation that's not what it is <laughs> oh I, I wasn't even thinking about that when um, I put it there. but i would i would put it I would put it above you what? Ab- Abushi Nakamura, and the reason why is kind of the same reason why Trish Stratus and Lita get so much. Um, we give it so much respect, and I am going to give NXT Takeover respect, the respect it deserves, and put it over Abushi and Nakamura. One because of the ceiling it shatters. Two because I think it's a lot more memorable in terms of what I would go back and watch and what I remember. I mean, here we are five years down the road, and we're talking to Izzy from that match. <laughs> Right. You know, like, I think that's important. And I think, you know, you talk about what it what it possibly did for for your career, Izzy, you know, that huge moment. Mm -hmm. Um, It it did incredible things for Bailey and Sasha Banks's careers as well. Um, And I understand I know Nakamura and Ibushi might be, you know, if you're a hardcore wrestling fan, that's going to be your better match. But I I just really think that this respect match 30 minutes first thing like it. In, in WWE history, I, I I would put it at 12 for that reason. You know I, what? Yeah. I agree. I think you make a lot of good points, and I think having the actual physical embodiment of that match and what that match means is you have people who are inspired to become professional wrestlers because of matches like this, and we literally have Izzy here with us yeah. to, to tell that story. Yeah. Um, so you know what? I agree. I agree. Yeah. Izzy, how do you feel about number 12 on the list so far? I'm down with number 12. All right. I think we, for the first time in last match standing history, have a four-person unanimous yeah. decision then. <laughs> and there you go. Um, and actually, we have uh, Dustin, our producer here, actually wanted to ask you a quick question. Yes. Oh, he, oh he's getting the headphones are coming on. Here we go. Dustin. Hey, Izzy, it's hey. Dustin. Um, hey, what's hey, up, Dustin? Hey, nothing much. This is only like my third time ever having a microphone. Um, as <laughs> someone life. who is a new wrestling fan, what would you recommend watching to jumpstart my journey into wrestling? Oh, that's a really hard question. Um, let's see. Um, well, I think you should really start like, with some matches now. I think the Iron Woman match would be really good. There are thousands of matches that you can pretty much start out, at, like, start with, and then you would get the basics um, immediately. So I would go on the WWE Network, find a time period and, like, all that, like, where wrestling was really popping and it was going really good. Find a time period, and then you'll kind of get, 
like what's happening. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much, Izzy. Yeah, that was good. That was good. Yeah, of course. Um, Izzy, I actually had a couple of more. If if you just have a sec. Um, yeah, I'm not. Uh, NXT. Who is your favorite right now? Like, if you had to, like, say, this is, you know, if I was going to be a super fan of someone and dress like them now, who would it be? Um, I really love Tommaso Ciampa right now. Ooh. He's one of my favorites. You interviewed, I interviewed him. him. Yes, two times. Oh, and so I, it's not from interviewing him. I just think he's a great guy who's outside the ring. That's a great answer. That's a really good answer. What about uh, what about a, a, a woman superstar? Who is, is there? A, are you a big Rhea Ripley person? Who's who's your go-to right now? Um, it's really hard because just Bailey was my number one person, and she um, just was like the only one. Um, in the NXT Women's Division, there's not a person I really feel a strong connection to. I guess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. Maybe Shotzi Blackheart, even though she just started out, I like her already with the tank and everything. So I would say maybe her. That's a great answer. She is a lot of fun. I can't wait to see what she does. Actually, uh, Shotzi, the name Shotzi, uh, means a lot to me because uh, my family was uh, a German and uh, we had a dog named Shotzi, and Shotzi means uh, like oh. a sweetheart kind of kind of oh. deal in, in German. So, nice. uh, sh- yeah, Shotzi's really really cool. She's done some really interesting work since she's uh, since she's debuted. I'm learning so much right now. And yeah. uh, actually, you know, but 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 I feel like the the women's division in NXT, there are a lot of really great stars. I love Io Shirai, and yeah, Io Shirai is awesome. I absolutely love love. Don't don't take it from me. You're gonna take it from me. You go ahead, Bianca. Bella. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's hard not to. She's so, so cool. good. <laughs> how do you how do you feel about the EST of NXT? Um, I think I'm excited um to see what she's gonna do next. Um she's definitely um a pivotal person and she's a very unique character in NXT, so I'm really excited to see what she can do next. Yeah, there you go. Uh Izzy we cannot thank you enough for your time. I mean Yeah, thank you. For those of you um who aren't aware uh, you can definitely follow if you, for some reason, miss the first half of this podcast. I don't know if that's a thing that really happens, <laughs> but um, you can follow Izzy at It's Izzy Mania. And that's on uh, Twitter, on Instagram. Is that also how they can find you on YouTube, Izzy? Yes. Um, they All three, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, is, it's, is the same. It's going to be It's Izzy Mania. Make sure you put the It's because a lot of people forget and get confused. Izzy Mania. Mark, I mean, listen. And this is not the first place that you're going to hear this from, but Izzy Mania will be running wild. <laughs> I mean, it already is, but you know, give give us you know five, ten years. Once you come of age, that's really what it's about, right? Uh, once you get to that age, because I feel like if you were 18 right now, I, I mean, can you imagine if Izzy was 18 right now? She would be in the performance center. You would be you know well on your way, and the fact that you're building up to this moment. Um, where you're going to be so like so more prepared than anybody has been. Uh, oh, absolutely. Uh, Honest, honestly, honestly, keep doing what you're doing. You're doing, you. a, you're doing a fantastic job. Uh, it is it is actually an honor for us to have you on the show. So uh, we cannot wait to see where you go next. Uh, Thank and, you. And we hope to maybe have you on again sometime soon. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much. Yeah, if you ever feel like torturing yourself and ranking <laughs> matches that are really impossible, we would love to have you back. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's again at Izzy Mania. Anywhere you can find her, catch the hot tag with Izzy uh, on Wednesdays before NXT. Um, especially when it comes back, it's going to be really, really great. Um, and then call, follow her content even even before because she's going to have uh, plenty of content there to bridge the gap between now and then. So uh, until next time, we don't know what match we're covering. Um, it's going to be wild, I'm sure, and it's going to be just as hard to rank as this one. But uh, <laughs> until next time, I'm Spencer. I'm Paul. I'm Landon. And I'm Izzy. And this is Last Last Match Standing. Standing.